All right, everybody. Hello. We are back after some monumental technical difficulties. Oftentimes, if things go wrong on a broadcast, we try not to acknowledge it. We move past it. There's no hiding the technical difficulties, of course, that we have had. Uh, if you are a big fan of the Discord platform, you will know that it is almost down and it's complete and utter entirety. So we have uh, we have adjusted. We are a versatile bunch over here uh, with Sports Gamer, and we have gotten things back on track. And soon we will be ready to go for our next matchup. But before that, we do want to talk about, and we'll throw it over to the latest results here. We do want to talk about, of course, the vast majority of Game Two uh, that we were not able to cover. But Sawo, another shutout, a one nothing victory. Over Northern Ascendancy, do believe it was Vatu with the lone goal and the game-winning goal there. So just quickly to discuss that, Sawo again still in sole possession of second place now in the Elite Division. And it pushes Northern Ascendancy into, again, uh, a much deeper hole than they were already in. Yeah, and uh, just a tough situation for Northern Ascendancy and a good job from Sawo. And once again, Nike getting credit with a shutout and that what bumps him up to seven i believe on the season it's absolutely ridiculous what he's been able to do and i mean that save percentage keeps skyrocketing when they're now officially past the midway point in the season and there's looking like no real stop in uh, the momentum that they're riding right now 14 games played for nike between the pipes for sawo seven shutouts absolutely incredible it gets you a look here at the most uh, recent updated standings that we have. And of course, a very a big gap for some teams in terms of the amount of games played here in our 30 game regular season. So very intrigued to see again how this continues to play out. Of course, sportsgamer.gg has all the information there for you that you will need in terms of what is going on in this particular elite division. But Sin, it sets the stage for a matchup of who are currently one and seven. It is a rematch from last year's final as multiple time champion for Lunda HC. Get ready to take on our reigning defending and still undefeated at 14 and 0 H red squad. As we get a look at the lineups here. And of course it is the six that you would expect for these two sides, playmaker Potsloff and Eki up front four for Lunda with Tamu and Loimu on defense, Captain Cape between the pipes, and for H Reds, Villapoika, Benito, and Nikki Dangles, Domi and King of Apes, and FaZe. They are two of, if not the two best competitive sixes teams in the world. And they are going head to head here one more time. Sin, I can't wait for this. It's going to be uh, fireworks. I mean, that's really the only way to describe it. It's going to be absolute fireworks. And uh, what a chance for Forlunda, a bit of revenge that they can get from that last year's uh, championship if they're able to stop this undefeated streak that H-Reds have been on. That being said, H-Reds were the distinct, uh, uh, just, they were dominant in, in that. Uh, we haven't seen a team do to Forlunda what H-Reds did, and they just completely shut them down. They got the sweep on the championship. So a uh, bit of a kind of a grudge match here, and perhaps even, you know, a mental edge if H-Reds are able to do the same thing, keep that undefeated streak alive. And Forlunda will really kind of be in an awkward spot in their season, dropping down uh, further down the bracket. And again, we saw on the standings for Lunda with one of the, if not the lowest amount of games played so far this season, still with just 10 games played, a 7 Two and one record to show for it so far. We will move ahead, of course, to our individual matchups. We'll start off with the uh, battle of the centers. These two very, very familiar with one another at this point. And I mean, send the numbers kind of speak for themselves. Yeah, uh, Benito, extraordinarily good. H-Red's an extraordinarily good offensive team. Potsloff, perhaps not with the numbers that he wants, but that advantage that he has in the faceoff dot could really be the difference in this series. If he's able to win those key draws, set his team up for good situations, either to break that puck out or to hem in this H-Red squad, Frontlinda could really uh, find themselves in some uh, good advantageous positions. Absolutely. We'll move over to the uh, battle of the wingers here now as well. Again, Plea Maker and Eki for Forlunda Villapoika and Nikki Dangles for H Treads. And of course, we could talk about all four of these, Sin, but our focus for Forlunda does line up with this particular matchup because we focus on Eki and his gameplay style that we've seen so far this season. 
And my, 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 has it been working wonders for him. 21 goals. I wonder how many of those are uh, deflections and off of rebounds. His net front presence this season in the matchup that we've covered so far was next to none. He was just absolutely phenomenal. Atreds have got to be aware of that. Uh, so Domian, King of Apes, going to have to be c constantly trying to move Eki's body from out in front of the... Uh, you know, out in front of that net on the flip side here, obviously Villa Poika, Nikki Dangles, tremendous production from them. Both of them surpassing Eki and surprisingly to see playmaker with only those 16 points in the 10 games play between him and Patsloff, you know, a bit more offense to be desired uh, from that for Linda front three. I have to agree with you on that one. We move over to the defenders again, Tamu and Loimu on defense for for Lunda going up against Domi and king of apes and again you were talking about four of the most accomplished defenders that this division has to offer and again we look at domi and king of apes and still we we talked about how the elite division was still kind of reeling from that massive change at the top of the mountain and it is primarily you could say due to just the stunning defensive performance of domi and king of apes and of course they have picked up right where they left off at the end of last season yeah, and H Reds, you said it continued to sort of dominate the defensive game. And I kind of want to flash back to a couple seasons ago where King of Apes had a highlight reel, but it wasn't him on the good end of it. He was on the receiving end where he got walked kind of on defense. Someone deked around him multiple times and then scored. Since that point, King of Apes has become a wall defensively. It's like he took that what happened there personally and he decided to make his game better. Him and Domi in that championship series were brick walls and that's impressive to take something that happened to you get better from it and say that's never going to happen again that's what separates the good from the great teams that's what separates king of apes from a lot of other defensemen in the sixes scene absolutely and of course then we get as if these enough you know as if these matchups weren't enough sin then we get to the goalie duel as well you have cape arguably the greatest goaltender we have ever seen in the elite division but he is going head to head with FaZe, who, of course, went from rookie of the year to playoff MVP and champion. Now he's in his third season and has that stat line through 14 games. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. And when you climb to the top of the mountain, a lot of others will begin to uh, f start following you up there. FaZe is definitely one of those guys now looking to kind of join Cape near that top of the mountain or even uh, be able to push him off right here. And this season so far, 86.5 uh, save percentage, another sub one goals against average. He and Nick are just absolutely phenomenal in that regard. So... Uh, this is just such a huge, huge matchup. Every single position is is just you know a colossal, colossal matchup uh, between the pair, and it's this is just going to be exciting to, to witness. Absolutely, and sin our, our focus for Hreds is a little bit more difficult here because you know for for Lunda, of course, there's so many different things we could pick out. We of course chose to spotlight you know Eki's net front presence and how difficult it is to contain him because we haven't seen anybody be able to dominate net front like he has this season. The focus, though, for Atreds is a lot more difficult to find because, again, they're perfect on the season. Yeah, and it's it's when you have a perfect record, it, how do you how do you really point out a negative? Oftentimes, it's just you know finding what you want to kind of continue to do. I mean, it, maybe it is worth noting that they do have the second most penalties taken so far, but that's kind of always been. Uh, present there for Atreds. They've you know been known to kind of get into penalty trouble every now and again. They don't seem to really be able to pay for that, but. They do have more than double than Forlunda has taken this series. If they do get into continuous penalty trouble against Forlunda, that'll really take, you know, them kind of out of uh, advantageous situations that they want to be in. And it could give Forlunda a chance to gain those advantages on the scoreboard, take them away uh, from from their own own zone, which is where we know Atreds love to love to work. And, you know, it'll be a lot easier for Forlunda to gain that line when there's only four opposing skaters out there. Absolutely. So again, everybody, we are just about ready to go for our first game of two. Again, a championship caliber uh, matchup here. It was again the championship round for our prior game or for our prior season, of course, with ECL 12. As you get a look in, of course, at the prize pool that these two teams are very much eyeing, especially that particular number one spot. 
Yep. And uh, you, I mean, you can just see what is on the line here as the prize pool gets bigger along with the seasons, along with this new format. A lot more on the line for these teams. And these two teams especially are definitely vying for the top of the mountain and that uh, big uh, prize pool there in the grand finals. Absolutely. So again, very much looking forward to this matchup. Of course, thank you all for sticking with us as well. Uh, again, through those technical difficulties that we had in our prior matchup it's it's one of those things that happens in where you think we'd have more technical difficulties you know the people involved in this broadcast all over the all over the globe at this point and then sometimes it uh it just takes the platform that we're hosting on to just completely die out on us but again we're ready to go we should be issue free for this matchup with no interruptions i'm thankful for that because i would not want to miss this particular matchup it was one of those things last year where we had some of those biggie matchups that were uh, on our Thursday broadcast, which of course was previously our finish only broadcast. And I was very jealous and very frustrated over some of the matchups that we missed last season. Not the case this year. Very, very excited that we get to cover this. Although we will promote, of course, that tomorrow Sin and I will be back as well with four more games. Urbro Hockey taking on Conquer Gaming. Very important points for Conquer to try and get out of the basement and for Northern Ascendancy as well. Again, we'll see them back in action after falling short today against Sawo. Tough to say it's must-win territory against YMCA, but really all four of these teams going for very valuable points at this stage of their individual seasons. Yeah, it really is. I mean, the, you know, it's 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 kind of do or die in, in a lot of situations for Conquer Northern Ascendancy here. And they're getting, you know, going up against matchups, which you could argue are not the top team. So this is the opportunity for them to begin to build back and try to get themselves out of those, you know, uh, relegation spots. Absolutely. So again, we are just waiting here. The final few moments before a puck drop in this one. And, Sin, I almost want to go old school with this one. Really <laughs> put you on the hot seat. <laughs> How do you predict this particular matchup? Because if we weren't expecting the unexpected before the championship round for last season, we are certainly at that point now where between these two, you just you never know what's going to happen. You really don't. I mean, we, we thought it was going to be an ex extraordinarily tight championship series that could have gone mm -hmm. the distance, and H-Reds, Played perfect. There's no other way to say it. They've really yeah. played a perfect game in all four games. That's rare to see. It's rare to see a perfect game being played even in one game, but to do it for an entire series is phenomenal. So for Lunda here, got to have that in their minds, and they got to be searching for some kind of way and a strategy to flip that onto, uh, onto uh, you know, the wayside for Atreids. Absolutely, and I'm looking back at the results from those four games, and in fairness, it was pretty close. 2-1 in overtime for Atreids. 6 nothing for Hreds in game two, yeah. one nothing in overtime, and then one nothing again. So they were very close with the exception of game two. But again, it just goes to show you we never know what to expect here. Yeah. Of course, you see on this screen there, of course, the rebranding over to Sports Gamer. Of course, you know, NHLGamer.com still works for the previous uh, for the previous link. But again, SportsGamer.gg and SportsGamer on all social media platforms, of course. We here do uh, just a little bit more than covering the NHL side of things. So we wanted to encompass everything that we do here, of course, at Sports Gamers. Sin, we are ready to go. I cannot wait for this. It took us a little bit longer to get here, but it is the regular season matchup, arguably the main event for the regular season for Lunda and H-Reds. H-Reds looking to stay undefeated on the season, and we are underway. It is H-Reds in their, of course, home red jerseys for London in the road whites. Very excited to see how this one plays out. As again, valuable points up for grabs here. As Sin, you mentioned it in the standings for for London, despite only playing 10 games. I mean, there's competition for some of those top spots heading into the playoffs. Loose puck here, though. Plea maker will be able to recover. Tried to hit Eki in front. Of course, again, Eki, the golden helmet, signifying that he is his team's leading scorer. Of course, it is Villa Poika there uh, with the purple icon for H-Reds, the top point producer in the league heading into action today with 31 points in 14 games for H-Reds. Is this puck on net? Faze will play it out for King of Apes. Stretch pass there intercepted well by Potsloff. Instead, that's what we need to see from Potsloff. It's kind of his MO. You know, a very defensive-minded centerman. 
certainly needs to be on point with the attack that we expect to see from Hreds here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. His back check's going to have to be flawless, and he's definitely that. It does a lot of thankless jobs that a lot of centers do. Um, definitely wants to get that offense going, but you're never, ever going to see him sacrificing his defensive play for that. Hreds struggling to gain possession in the attacking zone. Here is Eki. Hands it off to Loimu. Gets it back. Shot blocked down. See what Plea Maker can do. That shot as well through the traffic. Doesn't find a way through. Eki was parked in front. Look for that throughout the course of this game. Bit of space for Benito. Poked away. I'm the goal line now. Loimu now Eki trying to hit Plea Maker up the wall. Great read by Domi to take that away. Big stretch pass now for Eki. Tamu able to pick that up and keep it alive. Eki shot from a bit of a sharp angle there. Phase on his toes. Domi able to fend off that pressure from Eki. Hits Villapoyko along the wall. Benito recovers, sends it around. Nicky Dangles there to pick it up. D to D, one timer to flex wide. Good attempt there from Domi. Now it's Eki in the neutral zone. Tamu jumping up to the play. Throws one on in a wild rebound there with velocity. Goes all the way back to the zone. Turned over here, though, and a chance for Atreds. Villapoyka, Domi, D to D. King of Apes pass a little bit off the mark. Furious pace to begin this game in the first of two. And arguably the two top teams, of course, and again the rematch of last year's final. Tamu has it. Can't force it past Villapoyka. Nikki dangles with a bit of space. Throws one on. Copy's there to make the save. Loose puck and Copy finds it in the pace. Yeah, dangerous moment right there for Kappa and his, uh, the Ferlunda team as that puck was bouncing around right there. But I do like it. Both teams, you know, not really being overly cautious. They're willing to stretch things out, willing to uh, try some of these cross-ice passes in the uh, offensive zone and such. And it's making for an exciting pace, as you saw. As it is, Potsloff able to gain the zone only momentarily. Great step up there by Playmaker to intercept. Puck nearly on goal. Phase with a cover attempt. Couldn't find it. Great stage, Red's coming down the other way. Nikki dangles back into the slot, bouncing around. Dangerous moments for uh, for both goaltenders here. Excuse me, is back into the H Red's defensive zone. The King of Apes will recover. Great stretch pass, able to find Benito, the captain, and sends it down low. Nikki dangles, dishes back to the point, and back in the corner. Good patience there, but perhaps a little bit too much for Lunda, able to regain possession. See what Tamu can do here on the breakout. Five men back for H Reds. They did manage to, for the most part, of course, stifle for Lunda in that series. You heard me read off the score lines. An incredible defensive effort that they have in patrolling the blue line. That structure not often able to find space like Tamu has here. Still looking to fight for it in the corner. Puck on goal. Dangerous moment there as King of Apes takes it away. Final five seconds of the period. One more rush for Atreds. Nikki dangles for Benito. Great poke check. And King of Apes can't make the play in time. So the opening 20 minutes, furious pace to it. But we could not find our opening goal. No, I mean, it's uh, definitely similar to the way that championship was played. You know, minus that game two was always really tight. Just, you know, either a tie game or just one goal separating the pair of them. And in this one, it's tied after that first period, 0-0. Some decent chances from both teams, but both teams also at the same time playing very well defensively, stopping a lot of the stuff that each of them want to throw out there. You can see only four total registered shots, three from Ferlinda, only one for Hreds. Uh, maybe expect to see a couple more here or there. Only two face-offs taken in that period. Yeah, furious pace indeed. Not too many stoppages here. Is, you know, really the only time the game slowed down was when one team or the other wanted to kind of reset and slow things down. And it was uh, for Linda more often than not trying to find a way past that uh, H-Red's blue line trap, which has just been kind of lights out for, uh, since that championship. And, you know, if you find something that's worked, keep, continue on doing it. And that's what H-Red's is doing right now. We'll see for Linda. Gonna be able to find a way to perhaps create a bit more space and gain some more zone entries. Second period underway here. Of course, again, ECL Elite Division action brought to you by our friends at Wilhelm, Kolon, Lakritzi, and ST Hockey. A big thank you to them. And we are looking for that opening goal between two of the best teams in the world here going head to head. Always a treat. When we see these two rivals going at it, deflection bid there. Think Cafe got a piece of it. Still h -Red's in on the attack. Nikki Dangles for King of Apes. Tried to throw it on from the odd angle. A bit too much traffic in front. 
Verlunda looking to get going down the other way. Potsloff, a great move. Looked like Playmaker was just a hair offside. And that's really unfortunate. That was a great play by Frelunda. They kind of changed that direction, almost made the uh, the back check of Atreids hesitate, which did open up the tiny bit of space for Potsloff. But yeah, just someone was a half step offside, and that kind of stifled that attack. But I'd like to see that from Frelunda. Again, they're going to continue to try those little things to sort of be able to beat Atreids. Lemu on the intercept. Let's see what Frelunda can get going down the other way. Again, so tricky to time it at the blue line when Atreds have five men back. Let's see here. Head of steam. Playmaker loses it. Big poke check. Benito trying to chase this one down. Great heads up play by Loimo to poke it away. Further into that open space. Nicky Dangles able to find Benito. Net drive saved by Cape, And he's able to cover. Great save there. Yeah, a couple nice looks from Atreds kind of off of uh, turnovers that they forced or I mean, a bit uh, a little careless with the puck. I would say Plemaker was there. He, you know, didn't have the men uh, necessarily behind him. It was a great recovery for Loimu. That was, you know, great poking the neutral zone to force that puck off of Plemaker. And Loimu had to be great getting back there. But then, again, they even got another one off of a forced turnover. So you can see just how good um, that H-Red's uh, presence in the neutral zone here is. And we have a goal. The opening goal. It's Potsloff able to bank that one in. And out of... Absolutely nowhere, Sin, really, when you think about it. Yeah, I, again, it was just a dump and chase. I thought they're going to vie for possession. Well, they get a goal off the dump and chase. So, once more, Falunda throwing something at Atreds that perhaps they weren't quite ready for. The dump and chase. Potsloff gets it right in front of the net and puts that one home. One to nothing here for Falunda. The big time goal there for Potsloff. Just his third of the season. Falunda grabbing that one to nothing lead. A very important goal. I was going to sit here and talk about, of course, the face-off numbers that we had for Potsloff and, again, how at least he was dominating there like we expect. You mentioned it. The goal scoring maybe not quite to where uh, the standard is that he has set. Chance to they score! Rolanda doubling it up. Playmaker getting involved in on the action. Two to nothing now in favor of Rolanda. Sin, you mentioned him. They must have heard you. They have a two to nothing lead. Yeah, Potsloff and Plemaker, the two players that need to kind of get going here. What passing performances right there. Eki kind of throws it down low to Potsloff, who kicks it back across to Plemaker. And just like that, for Lunda have doubled their lead. Quick striking ability here coming out for them. But that's exactly what the doctor ordered in this matchup. So halfway through the second period, two goals now in this 20-minute time frame. For, for Lunda, still a long way to go, though. Deflection bid for Benito. Too much traffic in front for that one to get through. Let's see what Tamu can do now. Trying to weave his way through the neutral zone. Loose puck. Covered by Benito here. Let's see now. Nicky Dangles trying to fend off that pressure. Good movement. King of Apes throws one in front. Great job by uh, for London to take that one away. This one off the skate of Eki. Looking to chase it down. Banks it off the back of the goal. Potsloff is there. As one of the two goals, of course. Loimu, high and wide. That corner looked open, though. Eki again posted up in front. There's Playmaker now. Round the back. Trying to fend off that bit of pressure there. Double team, keeping it alive with the poke check. Hotslop just not able to outduel Domi. Good interception by Playmaker. Finds Eki, deflection scores! Hotslop's second of the period for Lunda's third. In the last 15 minutes, it is three to nothing now for the former champions. And this is where Frelunda can absolutely hurt you. They know Atreds have to try to get that puck out of the zone a bit more quickly, and that's where that forecheck from Frelunda comes into play. You see them getting the turnover high in the zone. Eki just fires it on net. Potsloff down low. Deflection, goal, and all of a sudden, it's a three-goal lead for Frelunda. Atreds in a situation where they have not found themselves in in a very long time. Again, 14-0 on the season. That undefeated stretch very, very much in danger. We don't rule out a crazy comeback. We've seen it before, and there you go. There's the goal. The commentator's curse exists. Villa Poika has his 21st on the season. It's 3-1. An absolutely quick answer right there from Atreds, which is what they needed. Nice bit of passing themselves, uh, as Ferlinda had on that second goal there. 
Um, Atreds comes right back with a drop pass, then the pass across. And just like that, it's back to only a two-goal advantage for Forlund. And yes, this is where they have to be careful. Atreds can score just as fast as they can. They're going to have to defend well. And right now, Atreds are... They're really going to be pushing here. They won that face off. They almost got that puck back in the zone for Linden. Again, they can't get trapped in and start to sit back here, but also at the same time, they cannot allow themselves to get caught. It's a bit of a balancing act here when it comes to playing defense with a lead because once they start, once the other team gets that momentum, it'd be hard to kind of shake them off. Shout out to whoever predicted that there would be four goals as we have a rare loop sync issue. Very, very interesting to see that happen. Uh, that's very odd. It was on the dump. I'm not too sure. Oh, the word dump definitely comes to mind. It looked like there almost was a penalty. Yeah. Th we've been having some interesting things. I mean, in that first game, we had that interesting situation with those penalties. And, I mean, now you see that. This is very odd. We did just have a recent update on the game. So maybe there's... Well, no, it's not out until tomorrow. So who knows Never mind. what tomorrow may bring. Never mind. <laughs> All right, and that's why, as they're going to look to take the penalty to make it fair, <laughs> Domi uh, having to give it a couple of attempts here, perhaps, unless this is, there you go, buddy. So uh, good, good sportsmanship from Atreds there. I suppose other teams could have argued that, no, it's fine, nothing happened, but they will take the penalty. That was deserved. Mm -hmm. um, not Domi's highlight. Actually, that will be Domi's highlight of the season. Let's be honest, that was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It will be a Forlunda power play, Sin, with the chance to reestablish that three-goal lead. But again, I'd imagine, uh, you know, unless it's uh, in the rulebook and I'm unaware of it, that uh, they could have just argued that and just been like, nah, we're, we're super competitive and uh, game looped, it's your fault. But the power play here, and Forlunda very much established in the offensive zone here. Loimu sends it back down low. Eki's able to recover. Great reaction time as Plemek. Back to Loimo D to D. Tamu shot blocked. Loose puck finds its way to Benito. One man to beat. What can he do? Toe drag. He couldn't bring it through the traffic. 35 seconds to go on the Fralunda power play. Again, Domi in the box. Let's see what they can do here. And they missed time it at the line. So far, so good for Atreds with just 15 seconds to go. Yeah, there hasn't been anything extraordinarily dangerous. And that was looking like it could have been at least a decent break. And as Tamu tried to walk that one in. But for Linda been caught a couple times at the line trying to get over that. But that's kind of the fear that uh, Atreds put into them uh, from that championship fear. It's so hard to get over the line that they're trying to, you know, jump the gun a little bit. Hotzloff threw it on. Pleamaker just couldn't direct that one towards goal. We're back to five on five. Domi has space. What a pass, but off the side of the goal. Final 20 seconds. King of Apes fakes the shot. One timer. They score. What a shot by Nikki Dangles. We are back to within one here in this contest. Unbelievable, five goals scored here in the second period. And that was just a great job by King of Apes, baiting out three for Lunda Skaters to go for that shot block with the time winding down. He fakes it, goes over to Nikki Dangles, tough angle, one-timer, but Kape gets beat. The three-goal lead is now just a one-goal lead, and it was, I think, you know, we'll let this play out first because you never know what can happen. <laughs> Kape able to make the save, and that will bring us to the end of the second period. Sin, we always say expect the unexpected. Five goals between these two teams when three of the goals in the championship round, or three of the games in the championship round, excuse me, were decided by one goal. Craziness. And I need to kind of go back to that pot stop goal right there because whoever that initial four checker was, I believe it was Eki as that was his side of the ice, actually chopped the puck to the middle for Potsloff. That is an unreal play to make off the off the uh, one hop dump and he did it and Potsloff was a recipient I thought it just kind of corralled over there no that was a uh, calculated chop there which led to that goal and the two in response here um, I think to get in that zone though I think it was a bit of a misplay at the end of the power play from Ferlunda they one of the defensemen kind of rushed in to try to keep the puck alive and it was near the end of the power play so when Domi came out of the box there H Reds had the odd man advantage which allowed him to gain the line and then set uh, established themselves set up, and that eventually led to the goal right there. Maybe a bit of a panic coming out from Falunda, as you saw three guys try to block that shot from King of Apes, and he kicked it over to the side for Nikki Dangles. So uh, perhaps you know a bit of miscommunication there for Falunda, which allowed them uh, allowed Raytreads to get that uh, goal to make it all the more closer. But 
nonetheless, this is going to be a very, a very tight and very interesting third period. And indeed, we are underway here for Lundo's three-goal lead, now down to just one after some phenomenal work from Atreds to get right back into it. Let's see what happens. A, another, uh, another great chapter in the uh, what has become a storied rivalry between these two teams now over the past two or three seasons. A good hit there at the blue line. Takes down Villapoika. Trying to bull rush his way through. Ezeki Temu has it. Scores! Sinip found its way to Playmaker. Wide open net. He won't miss from there. And the lead's back to two for Ferlunda. That's huge, absolutely huge for Ferlunda. What a way to start off the third period. What a job uh, for Tamu getting in to assist there on the rush, trying to get that shot away. It bounces right to Pleamaker, who taps that one home. Just like that, Ferlunda reestablishing the two goal lead. Still plenty of time. 17 08 here remaining in the third. Plenty of time. And as this game is gone, it can keep going back and forth, back and forth. They make their second of the game, his eighth of the season, and what is his 11th game of the season. 4-2 now, and a turnover here. Great job by Loimu. Eki throws it on. Faye is a little bit of trouble finding that one, but he does make the cover. So, and again, Atred's 14-0. Perfect on the season heading into this one, as Loimu's going to take a little bit of a skate. <laughs> that record's in trouble. It absolutely is. They have 15 minutes to try to uh, at least get the tie. And after that, you still have an overtime against, say, for Linda team who's looked very, very good on the offensive side of things and been able to, uh, you know, kind of not really hem them in at times, but turn defense in the offense. There's a good save there off the chance from Villapoika. Linda able to get that one out of trouble. Potsloff up to Pleamaker. Great defense there by Domi. Atreds entered today with 12 goals allowed in those 14 games, the fewest in the league as Loimu nearly walked away with that one. Pass in front broken up. Great chance there, but better defense again. Eki elects to make the safe play. Hopefully, Maker was trying to you know, free the zone there. Make something happen on the stretch pass. They are not able to time it at the line. An offside call. 12-14 to play here. Again, the first game of two between these two teams here. Yeah, and time on the side of Fralunda here as we have a neutral zone face-off. They want to try to keep the puck away from their zone as much as possible and try to keep some men back. That being said, they're still being aggressive at their uh, at their own blue line here, trying to force some turnovers. That will be an offside. They sort of have to tag up right there, so kind of a free possession now uh, for Fralunda. But Tamu and Loimu have both been being aggressive still at the blue line, trying to get those turnovers and quick counterattacks. They make her incredible skating. Loose puck and Potsloff had a great chance to try to sweep that one home. Here's Benito. Atreds again stifled as they gain the line, but they are able to recover that pass in front. Can't find its intended target. Eki, a little bit of trouble. Villapoika, the pass. Puck bouncing around. Mickey Dangles has it below the goal line. He draws the trip. Atreds will go to the power play if they need it. It's off the post, and Kopp is able to get it on the goal line. It will be an Atreds power play for a Potsloff trip. Oh, goodness gracious. Potsloff, as good as he is on defense, uh, defending so well right there. His stick actually clipped Mickey Dangles as he was uh, toe-dragging right there. So it will be a penalty kill for Fralunda here. Eki taking the draws. Let's see what happens. Indeed, Benito is able to win it. King of Apes for Domi. One-timer there from the sharp angle from Villapoika. Loose puck goes to Loimu. Playmaker will have a chance with this. Bounces off the skate of a defender. And it's Atreds right back in on the attack. Villapoika for Benito. King of Apes able to recover here now. Really closing in. Domi gets it to Villapoika back again. Villapoika trying to get to that short side. Just getting muscled off the puck. One timer broken up. Great poke check by Playmaker. Nicky Dangle still fighting for it. We got a sprint for the puck and what a chop by Loimu. Excellently done. And Eki thought about uh, pursuing right there, but very low on stamina, as you can see, towards the end of this penalty kill. Got to try to uh, recover that as quick as possible. Here's Domi for Villapoika. Just missed. We're back to five on five. Villapoika in front. Nikki Dangles denied. Tape protecting that goal line. Nikki Dangles again had it. Turned it over. Eki able to find Playmaker. Two on one, perhaps developing here. Playmaker drives wide, throws it in front. And FaZe is there. He'll play it out as well. Atred's trying to keep that pace up. Five minutes to go. And down by two. Perfect record at risk. 14-0. 
But for how much longer pass in front, it's in! Villapoika's second of the game. We are within one. One more time on the scoreboard. Sin, four minutes to play. And that looks like it banked off of a Ferlunda player as a, the, the no replay right there. So, yeah, kind of unfortunate, but a bounce. It's kind of what, uh, you know, kind of can turn things around. Atred's a recipient of it. And now really trying to pressure to get that equalizer here with about three minutes remaining. Ferlunda going to have to be careful. And here is Eki. Oh, that big sauce pass from Loimu just picked off. Nikki dangles with space, throws it in front. Bounced off the, off the back wall. Lucky break there for Benito. Gets it back. Nikki Dangles tried to shovel it home. Great pressure there, but it's still for London with possession. Minute and a half to play. Playmaker. Contested with Domi. Domi able to take it away. H Red's trying to get something going. Block is their enemy at this point. Great job by Villapoika. Drives and scores! We're tied at four with 54 seconds to play. What a play by Villapoika, who... Knew the pass was a bit off. Loimu got the intercept. He bodies him immediately, forcing the turnover. Potsloff just jumped on that draw, too. Atreds with another possession. They might not be done. They're going to go for the dagger here. 45 seconds to play. They're in on the attack. That one banks off the side of the goal. Here comes Potsloff. 3-1 or 3-0 for Lunda. Now 4-4. Here's Eki. He can't get a shot off. Loimu now. Looking at his options. Circles back. Great poke check by Nikki Dangles, but Potsloff still has it. A hold there, no call. Here's Pleamaker, finds Potsloff, poked away. 25 to go, and indeed there may have been a call on that hold. No, it's going to be a slash against Domi, and to the power play go for Lunda. This is big. They have a bit of real time here, and then carry over if overtime will be necessary. So for Lunda, this is a massive, massive opportunity here. Potsloff really wants to win this draw. A crucial face-off, the biggest of the game. Tie up by Benito, and Nikki Dangles is able to clear. It was a nervous moment when the puck goes back towards the goaltender. Cape does play it out. And they gain the line with Playmaker. Finds Potsloff back for Loimu. Tamu can't get the shot off clean. Here goes Benito. Can he generate the speed? Still has it, drops it back, and Sin, both of these teams, will secure a point. Surprise, surprise. With Berlunda and Atreds, we're going to overtime. Just who would have thought the scoreline would be 4-all? I, I certainly didn't. Berlunda with a 3-0 lead at one point in this game. And they're they're getting tied up now. A couple of those, you know, towards the end there. Bit of unfortunate bounces just came from net drives. But that's what we say all the time. Pucks and bodies to the net. That's what Atreds' mentality sort of switched to at the end. And they're able to get the equalizer. So their perfect season. Still a chance to maintain that even if they do drop it. They'll still be, you know, perfect without a regulation loss, at least. So the point streak will continue. But uh, it's a tough break for Ferlunda. I They definitely looked great. I think a couple lapses at their own blue line at times allowed Atreds to get a bit easier of zone entries than they wanted. And that, I think, was kind of the difference between these two teams. Atreds, a bit more stifling at the blue line than Ferlunda was. But it seemed like Ferlunda wanted to be aggressive to feed that counterattack just because... You know, maybe that tiny bit of a intimidation factor from that Atreds blue line presence, or perhaps that was their game plan, you know, simply uh, going into this regardless. And it did have them uh, in the advantage early on, but again, overtime was forced by H Atreds here. But for Linda, got, got to still be happy with their performance, especially early on. But next time, if they get that lead, they're going to definitely, definitely want to uh, hold on to it a bit. But we got overtime coming up, some carryover power play time for Linda. Let's see what they do with it. Sudden death, next goal wins. Atreds looking to move again to that perfect 15 0 as they will dump this one out. Bouncing puck will kill a little bit more time off the clock. And Aaron Pass as well, Sin will kill a little bit more time off the clock. Struggling to get going here in this overtime. Now 40 seconds to go. Here is Eki trying to shield that puck. Plea Maker able to pick it back up. He goes to the point. They move for Playmaker. Great poke check by King of Apes and a clear. Nearly held into the attacking zone by Loimo. He turns it over, though, and that will do it for the Frelunda power play. We are back to 5 on 5. Frelunda falls to 0 2 now on the man advantage in this contest. Playmaker able to find Eki. Eki just trying to bull rush his way through. Has it. An interesting quick animation there. Playmaker the shot and a glove save by FaZe. 
Good job from FaZe to come out a little bit to challenge that and cut off the angle and he gloved it down. If Playmaker was aiming for that far side and he stayed back, there's a chance that he could have picked that corner, but excellently done by FaZe to keep this one alive. Shot there, blocked down and sent all the way back. Racing forward is Nicky Dangles, that pass across just broken up. He's able to regain that shot as well, blocked down, Villapoika nearly had another one. Here we go, King of Apes. At the point, D to D with Domi. Great defense there by Loima to break that one up. Eki takes his time. We're five minutes into this overtime. Who knows how long this one could go. But then neither team looking like they're really focusing primarily on defense. Like, obviously, we see H-Reds turtling up there to protect the line, but both teams are still showing their willingness to take chances. Absolutely, and that's... Oh, here's a nice play right there. They force a turnover. Pleamaker with it in the zone. Double team, Potslaw for Eki, loose puck, Pleamaker around the back, still fighting for it, Villapoika able to send that one around, and Temu just not in position to be able to keep that one in. Yeah, but good read though, realizing he's on the backhand, it would be a little bit more awkward to keep that one in, so he just opts to maintain that possession. So he sends it over to that right-hand side, Pleamaker sealed out by Villapoika, so H-Reds regained possession. Thought Pleamaker was going to be able to make a play there and keep it alive. Nicky Dangles pass. He still has it. In front. Villapoika just wide on the glove side. Great chance. King of Apes for Domi. Again, exploring his options. Villapoika dishes it back to him. Shot. Can't get through the traffic. Great positioning again by Potsloff. As Domi sends that one all the way back to his netminder. Couple of quick passes here. King of Apes. Able to find Nicky Dangles. No, he's not. That puck bounced off the off the wall there. Here's Playmaker. Head of steam. Has Eki. And it dies on the side of the goal. Playmaker one more time. Potsloff can't get the shot through. Great chances for both sides here. There's Villa Poika. Able to bank that off a defender and into the air. H-Reds get it back. Nicky Dangles. Quick give and goes with Domi. Nicky Dangles sent it through the blue paint. Great chance. Like we're saying that a lot for both yes. of these teams. This is going to end sooner rather than later. Uh-huh. These teams just going. Or not. I mean, if you loop and you get more time on the clock, maybe it won't end. Oh, we're back to 17 minutes, baby. Nothing but overtime. All the overtime in the world. Why not? Double, triple overtime? Nah, it's all just one overtime. So here we go. 16 minutes to play in overtime number one. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter as it's sudden death. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. yeah, the stats might be slightly affected. I'm intrigued. Uh. Here is Benito for H-Reds. King of Apes dishes it over. Not able to find anybody there. And here's Playmaker now trying to lead things down the other way. Sends it over to Potslop. He'll drop it down for Loimu's shot. Eki's there. Playmaker scores! Prolunda hand H-Reds their first loss of the season. Perfect no more are the defending champions. Great job for Ferlunda sticking with that right there. And that was just a, a nice play. And they, they're the uh, beneficiaries of a bit more of a fortuitous bounce right there. Right to Bleemaker. Stick puts it home. Gets a couple goals in this one. And this is exactly what we needed. Uh, you mentioned it in the pregame a bit. Him and Patsloff a bit slower. Uh, starts here, at least points-wise. He gets a couple massive goals, including the game winner, to knock H-Reds out of their undefeated streak. That being said, the defending champions really put up a fight there, coming from down by three goals to tie it up. Uh, not only once, but, uh, well, oh yeah, just tied it up at four. Um, but they came back multiple times. I mean, they, they kept making it close and keeping it close. And for Lunda just simply couldn't keep them uh, out of the game. And that's what H-Reds can do for me. That's what every good team does. They are never, ever, ever out of the game. And they will never stop playing, no matter what that scoreboard says. And in that one, it took overtime for Lunda. Um, the beneficiaries uh, of that game-winning goal there and will take uh, the 5-4 victory two huge points for them as they do have some games in hand here and uh, guarantee the split in this series early on against H-Reds. Absolutely massive. The stats were close. The game was, of course, close. Not at every moment. Again, a 3 to nothing lead for Perlunda at one point in that matchup. It ends with a stunning 5-4 final as we won't get a look at any of the replays there on the goals unfortunately as nice as that would have been there were some interesting ones there some potential own goals as well from what we saw with the replay skips in 
Uh, needless to say, entertainment value wise, that lived up to the hype. It's been a very weird broadcast for us yeah. here. Discord is dead. We have multiple Rip. looping, syncing issues in this game. It has been one of the most bizarre broadcasts that we have ever had here with uh, Sports Gamer. Uh, we'll step away for a moment to give you a quick word from our sponsors before setting the stage for this fourth and final game of this broadcast. I wouldn't go anywhere because who knows who knows what might happen next this has been this has been a day we'll be back in a second everybody Minkä päällä lakukastike maistuu parhaalta? Ei voi tietää, ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. All right, everybody, we are back again. A big thank you to our sponsors, Wilhelm, Kovan Lakritsi, and SD Hockey, of course. Sin, one more game to go. Yes. Just to say... Between many different factors, we have been kept on our toes for this entire broadcast. But the important thing to talk about here again is for Lunda doing what seven other teams could not. And yeah. again, taking a point away from Reds, who, as I mentioned, are perfect no more. 14-0-1. Now the record and a huge two points for for Lunda as well. As again, you talk about kind of where they were fourth in terms of points per game outputs. Obviously only had 10 games played heading into the action today, but that pressure was on them with how well Feriostad are doing and Sawo. And while Havu dropped two games to Sawo on Monday, they did take uh, all four points away from YMCA off this particular broadcast earlier today. So the competition level is as high as it's ever been. And it puts the pressure on a team like for London to prove that, yeah, hey, we're still top dogs, if not, you know, in that conversation at all times. That's what exactly what I was going to bring up. How often in the past have we talked about the big two, the big three? We haven't really mentioned that this season. No, why? Because the left side of the bracket is anything goes besides a treads who were undefeated. Guess what? They just got beat by for Linda. It's. Uh, it's it's insane just how how much parity there is now in the ECL elite, especially when it comes to that playoff race. That left hand bracket could go up in any any way. Um, normally, we are kind of have the one, two, maybe even three spots are pretty locked in by this point in the season. Not so much this in, in this year. It's hmm. it's completely up for grabs. All kinds of teams are are hopping onto the scene, making waves. And I mean, take a look right here. Sabo now getting a little bit of space in that. Again, that's even a surprising thing. We had, we, you know, the captains all voted. They said Sabo, yeah, they're going to be in the playoff position. Mid bracket, they said fifth. They're currently sitting in second. Just one point, I guess now two behind a treads, but who would have who would have thought that Sawa could have been in that position? And you look down the rest of the bracket, 22 points, 20, 19, 18. A little bit of a gap with the 15, but now that's up to 17 for Forlunda. Still with a lot of games in hand. ZSC, who's moved on to the <laughs> to the left side of the bracket again. But right behind them, Roots, bro, it's it's completely up for grabs. And that's what makes ECL hockey so very exciting. When you have seasons like this, it could go any direction. The stakes have never been higher. And I'm I'm hyped. I'm hyped for it. Since last season, the eight seed, uh, which was IQ, them and Poggers, uh, both at seven and eight, had 31 points to make the playoffs. We have, I do believe, 10 teams who are on at least a 30-point pace this season <laughs> out of the 16. That's caster math, baby. <laughs> it's absolutely insane uh, in terms of the pace that these yeah. teams are setting right now where there are going to be some great teams that missed out on the playoffs. And yeah, they'll finish in those spots where you're secure for next season. We'll see you then uh, in our spring uh, season, of course, now with this new format. But this is shaping up where there are going to be some very disappointed teams that they fall short. And as we've seen in the past, uh, shout out to shout out to Auntie and company. I don't like to pick on Yippie Voskala, but that is a team that very quickly went from a number one seed to being down in our pro division not too long after that. Your spot in this elite division is never safe. No, absolutely not. As we have seen time and time again, the competition level only gets better. 
Yeah, and no matchup is easy, and you're seeing that right here. H Reds uh, again. They, it looked like for Linda at times was we're going to kind of walk away with this one. They had that three zero lead. All of a sudden, it was three two. Oh, they got that two goal lead back. All of a sudden, it's within one, and then in that last uh, near the end of the period, H Reds able to tie it up and. I mean, you can kind of expect no less between these two teams. It's going to be absolutely exciting with what NHL 22 kind of bringing to the table with the, you know, the more deflections, a lot more sh point, uh, sh you know, shots from the point. Europe has had to sort of integrate a lot more kind of, I would say, NA tendencies into the mix with mm. the dump and chase, which we saw a bit. Um, the deflections, the net front presences, higher zone one timers, which they'll kind of, you know, someone will stop up in the rush in that higher slot, you know, well above the circle to take those rippers from or at least present that threat. So you can't just, Oh, you know, back check hard collapse all of a sudden. It's great to see, and it's adding a ton more excitement here. And the teams have adjusted uh pretty well, as we saw. I mean, Eki, it's just a net front master with I guess he'll have what 22 goals now on the season after getting one there. It's just it's silly what these guys are able to do. And uh we're just absolutely privileged to be able to watch these guys and cast, especially this matchup between uh the two uh the championship rematch. Yeah, and I mean, again, you mentioned Eki now. I do believe up to 22 goals on the season in 11 games. Uh, entered play today as the league leader, despite the fact that some teams had played four more games than for Lunda, if not closer to six yeah. by the time this game actually took place, that first game at least. And, of course, as well for, for Lunda, you called it out, you know, Playmaker and, and Potsloff, you know, both at at least a point-per-game pace, uh, over a point-per-game pace, of course, uh, but maybe not the offensive output we've expected from them. Of course, it wasn't all that long ago, really, that you you looked at somebody like Playmaker who was just racking up the goals he had like 70 fun. points or something um, like that in that season. <laughs> like, yeah, so it was. And I'm trying to take a look here because it was ECL 10 where he had 58 goals and 93 points in 30 games. Oh, my God. Uh, so, of course, you know, he, he has set the bar very high for himself in the past, to say the least. It's it's insanity. It's absolute insanity when you look at the talent level amongst these two teams the sin you get a look at the teams in the lobby of course and again uh no surprises whatsoever in terms of how people set things up eki though the one player uh with magnetic as opposed to elite edges yeah see that makes me question the meta because if eki's doing something different i'm like all right well the, clearly he's on to something this is arguably one of the best nhl players in the world if not at the top of that mountain certainly he could be classified at the top of the mountain in the eu scene uh, yeah, it's it absolutely uh, definitely become the meta here in Europe as it's always been the puck possession styles you guys are seeing on screen matchups tomorrow, which will be a bit later than normal as you see there 2030 CET Edinburgh conquer northern ascendancy and YMCA completely taking to Tuki's job right out from under him by uh, listing those off. Uh, but hey, if it's on screen, sometimes you just react. Again, we, we discovered last week, unfortunately, when I had the uh, the lovely, uh, when, when it was Tuki goes to dentist, uh, <laughs> when Sin was able to cover uh, our, our broadcast last Thursday as well. Like, he's not in the play, by, or he's not in the color role because he can't do play-by-play. -play. Like, you know, and there might be some times this season where I just get to sit back and relax and watch Sin. Uh, you know, drive the car here because he very much is capable of it. We will just uh, we'll just keep patting ourselves on the back here yeah. as well. Why not? Hype ourselves up, man. We've been hyping these teams up. It's time for some caster love. We are great. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of great, H-Reds and Forlunda going at it one more time. Here we go. Forlunda in their home red. H-Reds with a different look for their road units this year. So I got to be honest, I like them. I do. I love any sort of off-white coloring, and that's what they're rocking right now. Absolutely. So here we go. Again, a 5-4 overtime victory for Forlunda in game number one. Absolutely outrageous. What are we in store for here? Any bets on a one nothing scoreline and just a pure <laughs> defensive war? It could happen. It absolutely could, especially after that first one. You know, both teams, bit of perfectionists in that way. They're probably both saying, we allowed too many goals. We allowed too many chances. Let's tighten it up and still try to maintain some of that offensive presence. Nice zone entry, though, by Tamu. Trying to start something and get that down low cycle. Hungry for the puck right there. Does get it back from King of Apes, but Apes not giving up on the play either. Nikki Dangles tried to feed Villapoika, who was tripped. And Atrets will go to the power play playmaker going to the box for this one. 
Yeah, a bit unfortunate there as he was trying to adjust and get the poke off. And oftentimes when you're ch switching directions like that, it can make that initial poke a bit more awkward. The aiming has been... I uh, will say buffed in the, this rendition of uh, NHL, but in that case, he will go to the box. Eight reds onto the power play. And off the tie-up, Tamu sends it down. Faye is able to play that one. And let's see indeed what eight reds do entering play today. Best power play in the league. They score on a third of their chances. Defense there by Tamu, but just too much pressure for him to survive. Domi for King of Apes back again. Villapoika in front. Great job to get a stick on that. Eki can't clear the puck all the way out. King of Apes pinching in. Short side chance there for Nicky Dangles. And now on the second attempt, the puck is cleared with 30 seconds to go. That was a beautiful clear by Tamu, clearing his own net. That can be dangerous. If that banks off your net, goes right back into the corner boards, and they maintain their attack. But beautiful clear by him as the first initial one from Eki goes uh, by the wayside as it was intercepted by King of Apes. But we saw from Atreds coming out what we saw a bit of from in that last game. Not afraid to test those tough angles, and they love the quick passes for those uh, short side opportunities as well. Good look for Benito there, nearly picked up by Villapoika in a high danger area. Atrez getting the better of the offensive momentum so far. Here is Benito stuck on the backhand. Eki, loose puck. Tamu able to pick that one up. Left of his netminder. Here's Botslav. Trying to hold on to it. Draws a trip himself. And it will be for Lunda going to the power play here. As we see Benito going to the box. So a huge advantage here. As Botslav gets to take this face off against the winger. Yeah, it'll be Nikki Dangles taking the draw there as the right winger for Atrus. So we'll see if Potsloff uh, going to be able to throw that. Sometimes we see those wingers step in. And you're just not used to what they're going to do. We'll see here. And off the draw, Nikki Dangles with the win. As the puck there and sends it all the way down. Kind of no real surprise there. And, of course, Nikki Dangles being able to take faceoffs. I mean, again, you're talking about one of the best uh, 1v1 players in the oh, world yeah. as well. Yeah, absolutely silly. So not too much of a disadvantage there on the draw. And it could actually be, you know, seen as an advantage. As I said, you kind of get used to the tendencies of that opposing center. So when someone else gets in there, you kind of have to maybe try to switch things up or just go uh, for something a bit more simple. And well, as we saw, Nikki Dangle was able to win that. They've been able to keep, H uh, sorry, keep for Linda from uh, gaining that zone once again midway through with this power play for them. This playmaker not able to time it with Loimo. 56 seconds to go on the power play. And for Linda right now, struggling to gain the attacking zone against the shorthanded Atreds. Yeah, we see it constantly. Uh, it's so, it can be so very hard to regain that line once you lose it on the power play, even with four men, but especially if those four men are Atreds skaters who have some of the best blue line presences in the European scene and perhaps in the NHL scene in general. Another clear from a forced turnover at that blue line for Linda with one more rush here on the power play. Let's see what they can do. 15 seconds before the return of Benito. As Potsloff sends that one over. Loimu throws it on. Eki was in front. Great stop by Fayez. Playmaker sends it around. Recovered by Domi. Let's see what Atreds can do here on the attack. Benito stifled. Potsloff recovers. Sauce pass to Eki. Has Playmaker with him. Great pressure there by King of Apes. Eki forced to take his time. Loimu one-timer off the man in front. And Atreds able to recover. Seven minutes to play now here in the opening period. An interesting moment there. Falunda just kind of let it go. Yeah, it looks like Tamu thought he was going to maybe pick that up, but just didn't quite get close to it. And Atrez got some zone of time for it. Domi there trying to fend off that pressure. And a penalty is called for Lunda. Back to the power play. It's going to be a slash. I didn't even see it. But Domi back to the box again. And Sin, this is what we kind of saw from Domi before the playoffs. Kind of getting into penalty trouble here and there. Yeah. It, it hasn't been, the uh, so far at least, the same guy that we saw in the finals last year. Yeah, he's kind of a streaky player like that. When it rains, it pours for his penalty woes. And this is what his third one that he's taking in this two games so far. Definitely yeah. not what uh, he wants to do and not what he expects of himself. There could lead to them getting down. But again, they get a nice clear. So starting on the as good as they can here on this uh, penalty kill. Puck dumped in for Lunda, second best power play. Just behind Atreds to enter into play today. Should notice that Atreds is one of the top three penalty kills. Surprise, surprise. You see now why Sin and I struggle to find just one thing to focus on for them. Another clear. Copping. Kind of swimming around back there. 
Mo motivating swimming, I'm going to go with. You know, just trying to motivate the squad through interpretive dance. As Nikki Dangles has it here, a lot of pressure. He's able to hold it. We are back to five on five one more time. Two successful kills for h -Rets. As Domi putting the pressure on, wins that puck back. Nikki Dangles and Domi still fighting for it. Well, let to come up with it. Two minutes to go, still looking for our opening goal. Of course, we didn't find our opening goal until the second period of last game in which there were five goals in total in that second period. One minute to play here now. Hatreds, of course, stacking the line, trying to make it as difficult as they can for Verlunda. But Hatreds get it back there off the chance of Spike giving up the zone. Here's Villapoika. Absolutely crushed off the puck. Domi now pinching in as well. Fleemaker sends that one down. Wise move because that will do it. End of the first period. Same thing as last time. No opening goal in those yeah. 20 minutes. Chances of plenty for kind of either side there. Uh, for Linda, got to maybe be kind of feeling like they let some opportunities go by the wayside. And that one right there on that short side almost sneaks in on Kape there, who gets a pat on it, which just directs it to the uh, the side of the net. I think that was that you were referring to, where he just kind of just uh, unceremoniously shoved him down to the ice and was able to get that puck back. And surprisingly, just the one registered shot from either of these two teams. And also surprising when you have two power plays as for Linda had to only get that 51 seconds time that attack really goes to speak to how good that H reds penalty kill was. And once they got that out of the zone for Linda was exceptionally hard pressed to be able to gain that line. Once again, dump and chase didn't work. Walking it in didn't work. A reset to slow things down to then kind of all cross at once didn't work. And when you're, when you're being stumped like that, it can be so very frustrating. And that's what H reds can sometimes the best uh, way to describe their defense is frustrating to play against to say the very least so here we go second period about ready to begin uh, a five goal tally like i said in game one between these two teams what will we see this time out as sin uh, i'd say accurately speculated we could see a more uh, defensive effort between these two teams but you never know with the offensive firepower that they both possess belinda not able to hold on to that one Nikki Dangles hands off the Domi one timer, and again, too much traffic in front for that shot to find a way through. Eki over to Tamu down that left hand side. Tamu sends it around. The pinch from Loimu takes the hit, puck right back to the neutral zone. Are able to maintain the possession here, so they'll slow it down. But you can see that five men lined up in a line for A Treads here. A little bit of trouble there as well. <laughs> Trying to hold on to that one. Just too many layers in defense. In. So difficult to just gain the attacking zone. I mean, we saw too uh, for a team like Northern Ascendancy, their struggles against Sawo earlier in this broadcast just to consistently gain the attacking zone. And then, of course, you consider the pedigree now that H Reds bring to the table as our defending champions and just how much more difficult it happens to be. There's King of Apes. Get a handoff for Domi, mistimed at the line and offside here. A bit of a more rare offside in this matchup with how good these two teams are recognizing various situations, especially for H Reds there. They've had a bit more uh, easier time gaining the line than Ferlunda has thus far. Unable to do it right there, and Ferlunda will win that neutral zone faceoff. See if they can get a quick entry. Again, mistimed for them that one. Banked off of Oloimu, plea maker, nowhere to go. Benito as well can't hold on to it. Nikki Dangles tried to pick that short side corner, just missed its intended target. And they have another puck. Trailing back to the neutral zone. Recovered by King of Apes. Good pass to Villa Poika, but Eki was there to knock it free. Tamo taking his time as well, as you kind of have to do. And let those forwards generate some speed if you're going to break down that trap. Nikki Dangles finds the pinching King of Apes back in front. Kick behind the net. An opportunity there on the wraparound. Cape all over it. Yeah, and what Ferlinda's doing a bit better job of is not allowing Hreds to just kind of drive that middle. They tried right there, a bit too many bodies in six. They can always, always be dangerous with the bounces, and for right now, Ferlinda being able to survive that onslaught. Off the draw, Nikki Dangles just couldn't control it. We'll see Pleamaker go down the other way. Has some space to work with. Eki around the back, back to the point. D to D, broken up. Potslops pass off the mark. Ferlinda still in possession though. Tamu shot doesn't get through. Great job to break that one up. Potsloff tried to throw it on with Eki in front. A lot of broken plays and second opportunities as a result. Still looking for our opening goal. 
Tamu just able to get out of the reach there of Nikki Dangles. Playmaker has it. Shot on. Kick saved by Fates. King of Apes as well. Just able to weave his way out of traffic. Benito from Villapoika. The pass is just a little bit too far behind. And we have another offside call. That's an unfortunate break there for Atrez. Kind of maybe an unforced error, you could call it there, as they did have the the opportunity to get into that zone and uh, generate some chances there, but it kind of a, you know, errant, eh, more of a missed pass and just a little bit behind, as you said, and forces the offside, which kind of relieves uh, the impending pressure that uh, Fernlinda could have been under. Today we get passing that works similar to FIFA, where you can properly lead somebody into open space without having to manually sauce it. Yeah. Cannot wait. That's going to make the gameplay next level. I'm calling it now. We have just under four and a half minutes to play here in the second period. Again, the second game here of two in this regular season matchup. We will not see these two teams play each other again in our winter season unless they meet in the playoffs. They could very well do just that. One more time as Domi's pass intercepted by Potsloff. He's running into a lot of trouble. Villapoika has it for the moment. Pass in front, second chance, glove save by Kape. Huge save right there from Kape there. Is that, again, kind of a broken play. The pass didn't get through, went right back to Villapoika's stick. Quick changes in direction, and Kape able to maintain his positioning for the most part and glove that one down. Another crucial face off here. This one won by Atred. Slap shot, a lot of traffic. Second chance from Villapoika as well. Hits the traffic in front. Here's Eki off a great feed from Playmaker in front. Potsloff and a glove save by Faiz. One minute to go here in the second period. Both goaltenders having to make some big saves in these clutch moments. As Tamu over to the right-hand side, mistimed by Eki. Offside, another big face-off with 18 seconds to go. Still time, Sim, for one of these two teams to strike. Yeah, Tamu probably wanted to get that dump just a little bit deeper into the zone as it would have crossed the line quicker, and Eki could have had that head of steam that he had gathered. There's a bit of time left here if they are able to break that in or going back the other way for eight treads. But Lapoika gets it for Nikki Dangles all the way across. Again, too much traffic in front. Benito, one timer by Domi, just wide. And indeed, still without a goal through the opening two periods as we'll get a look at one of Kafe's saves. He's had to make a you know decent fair few at times here. This one on the wrap around there, he completely sells it off. No chance for Villapoika to stuff that one home. So we're getting another look at it on the angle there. You can see him, uh, that foot over the post, which has become the meta. Not a whole lot of uh, hugging the post goes on here at the upper levels of competitive play. Well, these two teams give us a little bit of everything, don't they? I mean, the first game, a uh, five to four kind of thriller there. This one, a little bit more tight, not as much scoring, zero, zero. It's still exciting, though, because, well, it's two of the best teams going at it, and there's chances of plenty. The defense kind of trying to snuff them out. It's a lot more kind of elements of randomness to this one. The bouncing puck, a bit more of a factor at times, and for the time being, going more in favor of the defense and goaltendings than it is the offense, that everything can change in this third period. It's now really kind of coming down to who's going to get that, you know, pivotal first goal. And with how things are going and how the championship played out, that could be the last goal as well. Third period underway. Again, a reminder, Sid and I will be back here tomorrow for another broadcast. Make sure to follow the channel if you're not. And keep an eye out on all the social medias. Of course, SportsGamerGG and SportsGamer.GG. For all the information that you need here on the Elite Division and everything else going on with the ECL. And dump and chase into the corner there. Playmaker gets it to Potsloff. Shot it just wide on the glove side. Here's Nikki Dangles now. Chance for Domi as he steps up. Villapoika for King of Apes. No shooting lanes for him. They have to keep working it around. As Domi has that one picked off by Loimu. Send it all the way over to the left where Potsloff's there. Rifled pass back to the defense and a lucky bounce to keep it alive. It's in. There have been some moments here in this third period already. It looks like they're playing fast forward. Absolutely. I mean, that pass back right there was a... Wow, what a hit by Eki there to force a turnover. Big hit by Eki. Loimu, one-timer just wide. That short side was open. Another near miss. It is for Lunda in possession. The first goal could win this. Here's Potsloff. Finds Eki. Shovels one on. Scores! Playmaker once again finds himself right place, right time, and Frolunda strike first.
And for his third one, kind of uh, in that vein, it's no, it, you can no longer consider it at any point an accident. That's what happens when you go three men, kind of drive towards the net and get to all those angles. One in the slot, two on the sides, and Buck goes to Pleamaker right there. He hammers it home. one nothing for Fralunda. Atred's now on the back foot once again. They're going to have to play catch up. I can't make a mustard joke, but just know that no. I tried. <laughs> 13 minutes to go in the third period. D to D work here. Domi back to King of Apes again. Back again. If they want those shots from the point, perhaps, but the lanes just aren't there. Good interception by Playmaker and a head of steam now for Potsloff. Has help, but what a poke check by King of Apes. Completely shutting that one down. Yeah, I think Potsloff maybe a bit too antsy with that puck. Could have slowed up a bit. They would have had a three on two with Tamu joining them, but uh, on the same side, the more he slows up, gives the H Reds back checkers more time uh, to catch up there as well. Perhaps just trying to get that one in and uh, get a quick shot on net, but didn't work out. Playmaker gets a run over there, gets back to his feet to intercept it. And all over the place in this one. Dumps it over to the right. Eki's going to win that one, barring a bounce, and indeed a bounce is what he suffered from. Potsloff tried to shovel one on. Fleamaker hits the side of the goal. Actually, might have forced the save from Fates. Incredibly fast-paced action here. Halfway through the third. Again, the goal from Fleamaker. Said we were surprised by the stat line. He showed up in a big, big way. Here in this, uh, I was going to say a series, of course. It's not a seven-game series. Unfortunately, again, playoffs might end up generating that for us, though. They treads again. Having to deal with the pressure from Fralunda. Pleamaker into the open space. Tries to shield the puck. Nicky Dangles took it away. Comes Benito again. In that left-hand corner. Still fighting for it. One back, one timer blocked by his own man. It hit Villapoika. He gets it in the corner. And Domi's pass just off the mark. Will force eight reds to reset. Do gain the line only momentarily as Eki was there to break it up. And again, great job by Fralunda to free up possession. Here's Pleamaker. Tried to send it over to the right. King of Apes was able to pick that one off. A rocket pass out of the reach of his teammates. And an offensive zone draw coming up for Fralunda with 4.23 to play. Yeah, a pair of uh, unfortunate passes for the defense of Atredge. Domi and King of Apes. The first one, Domi clears his own for him. And King of Apes just a little bit too hard or a little bit too quick of a release on that one. Ends up leading to the icing. So a chance for Ferlinda here to generate some pressure with this offensive zone faceoff. Here we go. Another big moment for Benito to win the draw. And he does. We talked about that massive advantage in faceoff percentage. For pops off, Nikki dangles with a bit of space, and that quickly it disappears. Eki for Playmaker. Space here. King of Apes trying to fend him off, and he does a great job. Domi for Nikki dangles. Villa Poika for King of Apes. Jumping into the play. King of Apes. Loose puck swept out to the half wall. The and Pokes. Eki will just send that one out. Who could blame him? 158 to go in an attacking zone draw for H Reds coming up. The Pokes. Phenomenal from Fralunda right now. Uh, the defensive skill stick positioning. There's about two or three of them every time. It looks like Atreds might gain some space. And just nudging that puck off of the stick. That can be frustrating here for Atreds. Oh. Loose puck. Cape having trouble covering. And a penalty is called. Atreds going to the power play with a minute and 37 seconds to go. And then it will be Tamu for that slight little bump and what could be a costly mistake. Absolutely huge right here, and that, that's tough with that scramble that was going on. You're kind of just reacting, trying to clear it. If you get possession, he ends up getting the bump. What an opportunity for Atreds. Extended power play due to the real-time last minute here. Big time faceoff on by Potsloff. Turned it over. Puck cleared out by a playmaker. Great work there as we approach the final minute of this game. First game went to overtime. 5-4 for London victory. Atreds' first time dropping points this season. Here's Domi. Over for King of Apes, back again. Domi Villapoika stopped by Cape. Play move for Potsloff. That's Nikki Dangles, though, taking that one away. Again to the point. One timer blocked down and cleared by Potsloff. 36 seconds to go. Can Frolunda hold on in a shorthanded situation? Villapoika has a bit of trouble. Playmaker sends it down. 25 to go. Four Atreds in danger of losing both of these games. Domi has to hold up. He's offside. 18 seconds to play now. 
Yeah, that's unfortunate. That was when they were pulling the goalie. Phase was gone to the net. They're going to keep him pulled here for the neutral zone. Face off. Atreds trusting in their puck possession. Let's see what happens here off the draw. Villapoika has it. King of Apes for Domi. Back to him. Benito can't pull the trigger. 10 seconds. Eki clears the zone. One more chance perhaps for Atreds. Nikki dangles. It's Benito. Benito. It's poked away. Rolanda pull off the double and take all four points against our defending champions. What a performance as well from the former champions themselves. Great effort from Rolanda. Absolutely. Two one-goal games right there, but Rolanda coming up on top of them. That just goes to show you that despite the sweep, that last championship series was so, so very close here as this time goes in the favor of Rolanda in this two-game set, and they uh, erase Atreds undefeated streak and then in the same set they erase their point streak Atreds going to 14 1 and 1 for Lunda now up to 9 2 and 1 two massive wins and a statement that will echo across the chambers of the ECL elite saying that for Lunda will not be swept aside they don't care who you are they just took four points off of the defending champs a phenomenal performance there Cape his third shutout of the season what a job done by for London. I couldn't help but notice in chat there's Sin Kape, of course, mentioning it. Atreds didn't have to take that penalty in game one, so it is great to see that level of gamesmanship. But just four shots on goal apiece. That is how on point the defense happened to be. So many pucks knocked loose and so many moments of blocking uh, shots and shooting opportunities. Uh, that was a fight. That was a battle. Absolutely was, and I I think they're looking at that replay there, so we were getting a bit of a look at it. It might have actually been a pass attempt from Benito there instead of a poke. It was kind of hard to see with the angle and how fast it was moving. That was just a cluster of so many bodies right here. So we're getting a look at that plea maker goal, and again, right place, right time, but uh, half of the battle in sixes is your positioning, and that's perfect positioning. A nice little cross off the rush between plea maker, or sorry, between Eki and Potsloff, and plea maker, the recipient of that bounce after the passing and forcing that puck to the net so plea maker a pair of game winning goals and exactly what you need if you're perhaps not getting the point scoring that you expect out of yourself in this season so far he comes out and gets a few massive massive goals for his team catapulting them uh to two wins against the defending champs and until today undefeated h reds one of those moments where the game can kind of feel like it's on rails but when you have two teams that are just that closely uh, matched and it's so competitive Odds are it is going to be a goal like that yeah. that decides it. So a tremendous result for for London now nine two and one on the season. Atreds that perfect fourteen is uh, fourteen and zero is gone. Sin oh the horror they're fourteen <laughs> one and one on yeah. the season. What are they ever going to do aside from still being incredibly competitive and still of course the favorites to lock down that number one seed heading into the playoffs. A phenomenal uh, bit of work today. Again, we do want to thank everybody uh, that happened to hang around to keep things uh, you know, to keep things on the up and up with how uh, difficult of a stream this was, of course, due to technical difficulties that were flat out out of our hands and some technical difficulties that were out of the players' hands as well with some of the things that happened. Oh, you never know what you're going to end up with, I think, is the best way to view this so again a very interesting day of action here never a dull day here at sports gamer of course and we do thank you all for being here again a friendly reminder sportsgamer.gg is where you can get all the information but sin and i will be back tomorrow again four more games here as we wrap up week three in the broadcast schedule urbro hockey taking on conquer gaming and northern ascendancy looking to bounce back as our ymca for that matter both of them losing both games here today, of course, YMCA off broadcast losing to Havu. Both of those two teams looking uh, and are desperate for points at this stage to get back to where they want to be as you get a look at the latest results around the league. Ourobro as well, Sin. I mean, two overtime losses, but still two points instead of four can still be a little bit disheartening. Yeah, but on the flip side, ZSC getting those four points is absolutely massive. They've, you know, kind of been struggling at times throughout this season and, uh, you know, a bit due to the, uh, you know, 
Well, it's kind of, we, we call it server advantage at time, but for a warm up game, a bit tougher for ZSC to kind of get in it, but you know, good, good for uh good for them taking those points off of Edinburgh and uh, you know, trying to, trying to work their way back up. And as we saw uh, with the standings in the last uh, glimpse, at least they had kind of found themselves in that bubble location. They had the uh, eight seed locked up for now, but that's a big, big uh, asterisk next to that because there's about three other teams that they're tied with there. And, and with this, too, with h -Reds only getting one point out of today, that gap between them and Sawo gets a bit less. For Lunda, picking up some points, they still got multiple games in hand. It's, again, I don't I don't think anyone in that left-hand side of the bracket is really set in stone. I, I, I think it could go any which way. h -Reds can end up in two, maybe three. Sawo can end up at the top. For Lunda, could still catapult themselves back up. Who the heck knows what's going to happen with all those kind of bubble positions. And what a season for us to be able to witness. And what a season for you guys out there to be able to join us along the ride for. And we still have a long way to go. Again, we hope you'll join us for the rest of the way, but that will do it for this particular broadcast. We thank you all very much for joining us. A big shout out, of course, to our sponsors again one more time at Wilhelm Koval and Lakritzi and ST Hockey. A big shout out to the people behind the scenes that had to work overtime today. A uh, tremendous job there. And again, we will be back tomorrow. Of course, you can catch Sin on the YouTube side of things at Sin for the Win Productions. I am everywhere, including right here on Twitch at Tugi24. Sin, looking forward to tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, fingers crossed that, uh, well, Discord comes back from the grave. That would be nice. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.